so it's Saturday, July 18th, and it's getting a little cooler. You can tell that we're on the last leg of summer here, but I haven't really caught any salmon. I've just kind of been ignoring the salmon, but I can't do that anymore. So my original plan, and I don't have the kids uh, this weekend, so I'm a little sad about that, uh, but it'll be fun. This will be the first time I've actually slept uh, in the eye camper by myself. I think that's going to be nice. I'm going to be able to stretch out and just sleep in blankets, and that's going to be cool. But anyways, my plan originally was go down to Homer. I usually catch silvers out of the Nick Dudiak fishing lagoon at the end of the spit there with my secret. Uh, I have this technique that I use that I learned from Russian George. But I got some information that the, it's really popping on the Kenai, not the Russian, I passed the Russian. I thought about going there, but I don't think the Reds are there yet, but they, they could be if they're at the Kenai. But anyways, people are catching crazy amounts of Reds at the Kenai, so I might do both. But if it's really good fishing, I may just camp in Kenai or Soldatna or whatever and fish there. So this weekend is all about salmon. So I'm gonna see what I can do find a cool place to camp. Maybe I'll actually boondock this time. Who knows? But uh, off for another adventure. So stay tuned. We'll see what happens. Drive through pizza, Sterling, Alaska. I'll give it a shot. So I went with the halibut hoagie. Ah, oh, man, this thing looks good. Yay for Halibut Hoagie. Bear sighted. Caution. All right, here we go. So not in Alaska. Fishing for salmon. Yay. Uh -huh. I hope to not fish. It's not going to do a great job. That's one of my uncle's hooks from the 90s, I think. Oh, I see. Sharpen it up a little bit on the edges. That's probably why I was losing them too. Gonna go over the top and oh, make okay. the point a little bit thinner. Very nice. Have to get one of those. Oh, that's sharp now. All right, thank you, sir. I'm sure. Have you caught any? Not today. Okay. Yeah. I fished at uh, oh, 11 till about two or three. Uh -huh. Never caught anything. Really? No one was getting that. I was way down there by the uh, floating dock. Uh huh. And then I guess after I went home, like around four o'clock, this place just exploded. Yeah. People catching fish everywhere. That's what my friend said. Did she did really good? You want me to net him? Oh sure. Okay. I'm trying to bring him your way here. All right, you thank go. you, sir. Ooh, got one in the mouth too. Little one, but uh, that counts. Yeah, appreciate it. Sure. Just set the net here. Okay. Now I can go home. That's right. Right in the mouth, baby. Oh yeah. This guy's reel fell off. He caught a fish without a reel. That is cool. <laughs>
Yeah, this is it. So this trip has been one of the most amazing trips of my, all my overland adventures. Um, my plan was to catch salmon. I didn't want to catch a lot. I've already got the freezer full of fish. I don't care for salmon as much as I do halibut. So I just wanted to catch a salmon because I haven't got one this year. So uh, my plan was to go to Homer, but then I talked to a friend who said that the Kenai was popping. So. I went to the Kenai and like an idiot, I, I lost about three nice, one of them was really nice. It would big old Kenai red. Uh, ended up catching a small one, but it, it was kind of restored my faith in humanity. Alaskans are so cool. They're so nice with all the stuff going on with the pandemic and riots and people just being crappy to each other. In Alaska, it feels like people are nice to each other and they, they treat each other with respect. Um, you know, I, I've got some bad, experiences from combat fishing. I don't care for fishing in crowds. I'm a fly fisherman. I just want to fish trout uh, on a stream by myself. But once in a while I belly up because it is kind of fun. I go to the Russian River. I've got some bad experiences of being elbow to elbow with these guys fishing and there's some jerks out there. There's some guys that live in Anchorage. They go to the Russian River. They drink beer all night without sleeping and they fish and they're just elbowing you. Hey, that's mine. They carry scissors so they can cut your line when you get your line wrapped up in theirs. And they just want to make you miserable. But I'm realizing that's only a small portion of the people. There's actually mostly nice people. Those guys, those old guys I was fishing next to helped me out, uh, taught me, you know, I haven't fished in a couple years, that flipping style. All you're doing is flipping and then the red salmon runs into your line and you jerk it, catch it in the side of the mouth. They're not feeding. But these guys are telling me, you know, use at least one ounce weight, pull it up a little more, checking my hooks. My hook wasn't sharp enough. This guy sharpened my hook. I watched another guy catch a fish with no reel. His reel fell off, so he was just holding his line on his pole. Uh, and he caught the fish. But anyways, it was just an incredible experience. And I'm not a fishing addict like I used to be. I, uh, in the old days, I would go 24 hours without peeing, pooping, eating, sleeping. I would only fish, but I'm not that manic with fishing anymore. Uh, I was happy to get my one fish and then I was just ready to overland. And what I wanted to do was go to Ski Lake 
and I've seen two campgrounds there, but I wanted a free campground. So uh, I texted my friend Bizzo. He's not even here anymore. He's in uh, Hawaii. I texted him and uh, he said, man, just, just go to my spot on the peninsula in the mountains. And I'd been here before and I thought about it, but I was like, okay, that's, that's a boondocking. This is my first boondocking place where I'm actually camping out in the middle of nowhere. So finally I said, okay. And uh, I pressed the Tacoma to the limits. I barely squeezed between these two trees to get up here. I followed a power line trail for a long time. And uh, I missed the best spot. The best spot was this lake overview on the top of this cliff with this lake view. And there was already some campers there, but I feel like I got the second best spot. It's at the top of this little knoll. It's a dead end right here. I'm not gonna get traffic. Hopefully people aren't gonna come up here and party because it, this is kind of a party spot. That's why I didn't wanna go there, but I pushed it. So I, the only people that could make it up here is somebody with a four x four rig. Um, you know, there were stock cars going up the main drag there, but I've got full signal, so I'm gonna just, you know, I'm tired today, I didn't sleep much last night. I'm gonna crawl up in the eye camper, watch Netflix tonight, get a good night's sleep. You know, I've got this salmon on ice for my mom. I'm gonna bring it to her, but my Bizzo did tell me, this is berry, this place is big. There's a lot of big bears. These are big Kenai Peninsula brown bears, and there's tons of them up here, I mean, the salmon streams are just right down there. They're just roaming around. They, they don't care. These, these bears will maul you. So I am I am armed. Uh, a little freaked out about that. Of course, my friend Ed says that I have a the eye camper is perfect for a black bear to climb up the ladder and get me. But I feel like I've got you know at least a little bit of protection being up that. I don't think a grizzly bear is going to climb up that little ladder. But anyways, a little freaked out by that. I'm going to cook some food and just call it a night. But man, just wheeling on these roads was incredible. And uh, this is one of the best uh, overland experiences I've had so far because it's a little bit closer to my hometown of Homer. You know, not all, it's halfway uh, to Homer and you know, there's other places we're going, we're really far, but uh, just amazing. So um, just a quick trip, I got my fish. I found an amazing place to camp, boondocking for the first time, so. This is it, living the life. This this is what I got the truck top tent for and the Tacoma for because uh, I just want to do this. This It doesn't get better than this. So uh, I just need a woman or something to come up here. But anyways, um, yeah, I'm super happy. I don't have the kids. I'm just going to sprawl out. I think I'm going to sleep good tonight. It's quiet up here. I did hear some gunshots earlier. My Bizzo, when he comes up here, sometimes when he sees bears or hears them, he'll just fire a couple shots to let them know what's up. But some bears don't even care about that. So I'm not gonna do that, uh, save my ammo, and hopefully uh, there's no bears here tonight. And the stupid Yeti cooler is supposed to be bear proof, but that's a crock because they can open car doors. They can lift the latch and open the uh, Yeti cooler. So. I'm going to drag the food away from the truck, but living the life, guys. You got it. The whole overland community is so cool. Um, and that, that's another community that's that's not really full of hatred and, and infighting and stuff. I feel, you know, there's always arguments, but uh, you just see more and more of it. Um, I'm going to interview a couple buddies who have rigs uh, in next week's episode. So it's just a lot of fun. So thanks, guys.
So, man, I just, being by myself for the first time camping in the iCamper SkyCamp 2.0, I realize how freaking big it is. This is a king size memory foam mattress, and I am so comfortable. This is great. I could get used to this. I've got my backpack, all my gear laid out on this side. I'm going to sleep with my pillows and my wooby and my quilt. Just spread out. I'm not in stuck in a mummy bag. I hate sleeping bags because you're you can't stretch out or anything. You're in a little sleeping bag. So I'm just sleeping in blankets on a memory foam mattress. It's king size on top of my truck. A little freaked out. It's uh it's ending the it's nearing the end of summer in Alaska because we've actually, you know, it kind of sucks for hunting because it start getting dark at 11. But uh, it started getting dark and I started getting hyper vigilant and sensitive to all the little noises in the woods. So uh, I cleaned up camp and put out the fire and hightailed it up here. Um, and every little creak of the tent and thing I hear is uh, freaking me out. So anyways, um, a lot of bears in this area. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I'm, I'm safe up here though. I'm, I'm fine and I, I have protection. But anyways, super comfortable. So even if you are one person, it is not overkill. Two, two people, it's ex still extremely comfortable. Three, you're going to be comfortable. It's, it's a four-person tent. So three, you're going to be fairly, we're fairly comfortable with three of us. But four, uh, you're going to feel a little cramped, but it does fit four. So anyways, um, now I'm just going to watch Netflix all night because I've got a signal. I need to I need to boondock at a place with no signal, so I'll just read my book. But I'll watch for a little while, read my book. Anyways, it's it's paradise out here. I'm telling you, paradise.
45 minutes from town here and this was one of the best trips ever just another short weekend trip and I, I just feel like I'm living the life here um, first salmon of the season and I'm happy with it like I said I'm not into catching a whole bunch of salmon I'd, I'd rather have other things right now than salmon but it is nice to have some and I'll catch some more I'm actually got the salmon on ice in the cooler I'm going straight to my mom's house I'm gonna deliver it to her my mom's this little old native lady and anytime I kill a fish or an animal I give her meat she goes completely nuts over it she goes crazy you could say that my mother is proud of me that I grew up to be someone who kills other living things but uh, that's probably a bad way to put it but anyways overlanding has been really life-changing for me to me overlanding is more than just ripping apart roots and spewing exhaust into the atmosphere although that is a, a part of it I guess um, to me it's just about connecting with nature I have been out every single weekend going to the most amazing spots in Alaska and man being on that mountaintop was what I needed last night even though I only got a few hours of sleep I feel completely recharged get out in nature and recharge your batteries people it is just incredible I, I can't believe I'm doing this you know a year ago we were religiously watching all of Chris Sean's outlanding outlander videos and now even though I'm not living full-time in my vehicle um, I feel like I'm just living the dream it, it's it's incredible even if you have a Subaru and you sleep in the back seat just get outside crawl up a mountain um, now that trains going by that's pretty cool Alaska Railroad but man I am happy with the clearance I have um, that trail I went up last night to get to that mountain I, I have no doubt that there are certain stock vehicles Jeeps and trucks that could make it up there but uh, some stock vehicles it'd be like you'd never make it in a Toyota Corolla never in a million years and for some vehicles you would need bigger tires and a lift but man I am happy with the clearance I have I feel like I can get anywhere still need to get some more recovery gear uh, which I'll have for next weekend but anyways I'm going to call that a wrap for this week so thanks for tuning in and stay tuned for more adventures we're heading to Kennecott next week so should be good all right guys juke out